Hello there and welcome to a grand final for Company of Heroes 1. This tournament has an astonishing 1,500 US dollars in its prize pool thanks to Medicus and his friends in his Discord server. And watching two great players in this semi-final, best of three, starting in the south, hailing from France, it is indeed Le Pepsi, playing as his favourite faction, the United States. In the north, building additional pioneers, it is Dexen, one of the best players in the game at the moment. Well, Pepsi is as well, to be honest. He's going for a multiple pioneer build. There's one of them there. The other's completing the Wehrmacht quarters. And the other's in the north, capturing one of these many fuel points. Very big Chad move from Dexen to put the game um, number in the replay. It's game one of the semi-finals, so let's enjoy. And the map you may not be familiar with, it is... Verrier's Ridge, which is named after one of the battles after Normandy landings. There's a bunker here which guards a plus 16 munitions, which is a high point of contention. Interesting thing about this map is there are three plus five fuels right next to the base. One, two, three. One, two, three. Which means there's going to be a high amount of fuel income pretty much guaranteed unless you individually harass them. So it's an, an odd construction, it's not a traditional tournament map, but the Medicus has made is a very good tournament that, that uses a lot of variety. So um, yeah, let's survey how the two players play for this. It looks like Pepsi is going to go north, probably to contest this plus 16 fuel. And it's going to be juicy, it's going to be interesting. Folks Grenadiers coming out for Dexon. So just pioneers into folks ideas for now. And one would imagine the first person to get the high munitions is going to have access to early flamethrowers, so the pioneers don't want that to happen. They're going to come and contest. Looks like we've got riflemen joining the fray as well. Definitely could do with putting some music on, because the music in Co. 1 is badass. Thought there was something missing. So, yeah, big grand finals here. Thanks to uh, Medicus for, for organising this. We've got this rifleman taking advantage of his, I think his 1.2 capping speed. So this point will cap faster. You can see that flagpole get raised faster there. Meanwhile, pioneers were harassing. They capped this uh, plus five fuel of Pepsi's or, and uh, the base bunker catches him off guard there. So that's unfortunate for him. As I said, this isn't one of those maps that happens to be super well refined. It hasn't had community iteration because it was never really in the tournament pool in Co. 1. But it is interesting to see it here today. Riflemen continue their capping journey. So we've had munitions in the early game. Oh, got to call this out. We've got Dexen converging with three squads south of this rifleman. He can escape along this route here and may do that in fact. Yep, there he goes. Folks Grenadiers are hunting, but they won't find them thanks to this juicy escape route. The enemy advances. Engineers have also got to do the same. Meanwhile, Pepsi's putting her hurt on with his own harassment, disconnecting individually these territory sectors. So good movement by him. That's because Dexan's basically got all of his units in a cohesive tactical battle blob. in this rifleman squad. A lot of health damage was done in the end. But he has got disconnected territory sectors to show for it. Meanwhile, it's Pepsi who has the good income. You can imagine an M8 would be very good on this map. So one thing Pepsi may be looking to do if he keeps the good fuel incoming. Welcome everybody to when I'll stretch she neck in chat. And Duke Man How Ho the Possibly. Rifleman penned in here. Oh, that's nasty. That's dirty. Will they finish him though? Oh, the rifles are really low. They put got them stuck in the trench. Nearly closed the pocket on them. Meanwhile, pioneers may end up dying, but the grease guns of Pepsi's engineers won't go that far. Good kills we coming in ground. for the what Wehrmacht so order? far. They don't get veterancy that way in Co. 1, though, so it's all about just hurting the manpower economy of Pepsi, who makes it back to the headquarters building here with some very low health squads. You can imagine him needing to put the triage centre down because if you look at 
I mean, this one in particular, that's a six-man squad, but look. Um, you can't see because chat's in the way, actually. Sorry about that. But yeah, he's about 60% health. There's the first flame thrower. I told you Pepsi had the high munitions for longer. Good work being done here. And you can see that the damage was done by Pepsi's capping. Dexen may have all this, but he doesn't have enough to show for it. It's the disconnection using this point here, which has a really long tail and uh, ends up disconnecting all of Dexen's resources. So I think he's not played the map as much as he could do there. Probably needs to start mining this point, lest Pepsi keep harassing it. We do have the dastardly sniper out now. I think there are some restrictions in this tournament. I'm not sure if snipers are restricted to one or maybe two per um, player, but they are. There are restrictions in this tournament. Notably, Brits were restricted to two Veterans trenches um, co concurrently. Yes, sir. One sniper, Dexon says. Thank you. That's very helpful. Of course, this uh, semi-final was played yesterday, so he is talking to us from the future. Thank you, Dexon. And his folks are very much killing in the present. Taking out Pepsi's engineer squad. So that's 50 muni down the drain. He's not going to get back anytime soon. Oh! You can get into the base sector on this map. Pepsi could put demo charges on the headquarters. This is a very strange map indeed. But the bunker only stretches that far and there's no bunker on this side. What on earth? And is that equal at least? I think, no, you can't. There's a wall here. And that'll stop. I, well, maybe you can just about get around the suppression. What about this side? Oh, yeah. It's completely open. Oh, my God. What on earth? Love it. Because that means you could demo on the retreat. Ha! <laughs> so messy. I was explaining to some Co2 fans earlier why am I casting so much Co1 recently. The reason is, quite frankly, the Co1 players are more hardcore. They'll play for peanuts. But in this case, they're playing for $1,500. So that's uh, a, an interesting twist. But they've been basically just running tournaments for themselves and playing them. And as a tournament caster, I, I get off on watching tournament play. I, I'm not really that interested in auto match. So for me, it's awesome because Co1 is probably my favorite game of all time. I love Co2 as well. But I do have a big soft spot for Co1. And, uh, yeah. Just like these riflemen have a soft spot for uh, bullets right now. Pepsi losing out on the manpower economy war, but he's gained on the fuel war. Oh! Rifleman so low there. Wondering if... Yeah, we've got Supply Yard Depot up. What are we going to see next? What is this bunker placement? should be here. Just silly. Right, we're on... Uh, skirmish phase now. We do have pioneers on base. I mean, Kriegs Barracks. Next, there it is. Sniper here. Sniper's gotten three kills so far. The Yankees are grabbing our territory. If you're enjoying this in chat, please uh, join the conversation. Let's talk. Let's uh, enjoy this replay together. This cast is very much an open conversation. I do have my chat window up right next to. What's wrong with the placement? Well, usually in Coming Heroes maps, you're not able to just walk into the enemy's base. Uh, on this one, you can. Uh, so there's only two MG bunkers, and they don't cover enough, and they're not placed in very good positions relative to all the maps ever made. That isn't this one. The Zany says he doesn't want to talk. Typical Zany. Typical. There you go. You can um, survive a little burst of suppression from the based MG, which means you can probably enter the American base on both sides. What is Dexen doing there? That was nasty retreat bug, he says. That makes sense. Thank you, Dexon. He's putting a demo in front of the pioneers. They've got to use those MP40s more quickly. Oh, that's nasty. Will he sacrifice himself to kill the pioneers? He's just going to sit there. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. Meanwhile, we've got... Infantry veterans see coming in to get that passive healing. Those sneaky engineers have to run all the way home now. They've been very naughty. Yep. I thought that would happen as soon as I saw you could walk into the enemy's base. To be honest, you need to build a bunker. Because <laughs> that's going to keep happening. I think build a bunker, put an MG, put it there, cover your blind... There's going to be another blind spot though. 
Build two bunkers, <laughs> put them here and here, and do the map maker's job for them. Because they clearly didn't play competitive come here. Us. Really? Okay. Of course. Interestingly. I can't believe it. We're getting assault doctrine for Wehrmacht. That's the stormtroopers you can build there. That's insane. That's the first time I've seen assault doctrine in forever in a tournament. So that's Stu 42s, Tigers, Manpower Blitz. It's crazy. Blitzkrieg Doctrine, I meant to say. Thanks, Dexen. I keep calling it Assault Doctrine. Advances. Yeah, but it's that long since I've seen it in a tournament. I bloody forgot the name of it. Blitzkrieg Doctrine, indeed, yeah. Those nades as well. The assault nades, that's it. Pretty cool. I like it. Of course, there is Bugs in Co. One where you can use Cloak Stormtroopers at max speed. You're not able to do that in tournament play. Um, but Stormtroopers is one of my favourite units in Co. One history because it's my favourite way to play against Brits. You use two, stor two stormtroopers with two Shreks each, cloak them, and just take out those trucks. And it becomes this uh, incredible game of hide and seek with cloaked units running around. Sniper trying to tempt them into the MG fire there. Clever play by Dexen. And this rifleman goes to the wrong side of the bush. But here comes the M8 now on the field. First shot's a good one. Oh, it looked good. Retreat bug just happens. They never ironed it out in Co. 1. I can all, all, but tell you already, though, they've seemed to have ironed it out in Co. 3 um, from the time we've had with the game. But it, it, is, it was present in Co. 2 at various stages. Basically, uh, they need a hierarchy of commands. And a command should never be able to override the retreat command. Um, the basically state of retreating should exist until the uh, player hits a safe non-retreat zone. But um, yeah, hey, Betty boy, welcome to the stream. You're watching a random map cup for one thousand five hundred dollars. It's got his Krieg barracks back up now. I would have planted it back there. <laughs> it's one of the squishiest. Um... Well, they may happen. From my experience so far, they seem to have ironed them out so far. I don't remember this map, Ed, and I played a lot of Co. 1. I don't get it. Maybe I'm just deleted from my brain, perhaps. No one behind cover. M8's still not gotten a kill, surprisingly. Ooh, and the rifleman started to drop quite a big way there. Can he go prone in the right direction? Oh, this could be a squad wipe. Couldn't get a shot off. Yes, he could, but he missed 50% accuracy on retreat. Church takes a hit on that corner. Folks, Grenadiers versus M8 over there. Not a great map for Pack 38 play, it has to be said. So I'm wondering if Stormtroopers could be actually used in this game. It would be interesting. Two flamethrowers on his Pioneers up here. We're having a cook-off in the centre of Verrier's Ridge. Yeah, they do, mate. Basically, the sound di design and the art design in Co. 1 is, like, objectively superior. It's not even close, um, to be honest. But uh, they were just artists back then. Smaller team, a lot more contingency and agency over your work, a lot more, you know, probably just one or two guys doing the entirety of the sound, lol. <laughs> I prefer the circles. I hate the right-clicking points on Co. 1. There's a few things they added in Co. 2 that are just definitely way better. Of course, the reverse command and the capping circles, in my opinion. There's no one likes the uh, risk-reward dynamic of having to click into the circle. Having to click the point, I mean. Yeah, voice acting was better in Co. 1. Definitely. The Brits in Co. 2, were, though, were very, very good. I like the Brits in Co. 2. I think we can all agree. The British voice acting in Co2 is Co1 levels good. Basically, that's how it works. We can get a Stu 42 now. There we go. We're going to get the big Stu. Argentinosaurus was better in Co1, though, even though his name's Argentinosaurus Co in general. Tell you what, that rifleman's really suffering. 
Nobody on retreat path that I can see. That's a few really tricky retreats. And this M8's got on four kills, mostly folks going to ideas from the the uh, church engagement earlier, I assume. Right, so Dexen has now calculated that this is his area of operation for support weapons. Because it's a little bit more open. He's going to get the Stu operating over there as well. So that means he's going to struggle to be on two sides of the map at the same time. Got all his weapons over here. He may have to forsake some of these territory sectors. But in terms of victory points... The VPs are uneven. It's a triangle. There's one victory point here and one there, all on the east. So why would you go for the western side as Vermat? Stu 42 is going into base. Go on, big fella. What are you going to do for us? Take out the supply yard. No, it's a bit further away. He's, he's doing a recce at the moment. You could take out the racks. That'd be pretty interesting. Takes ages to get the uh, the AT gun out, so he won't be able to respond in time. Oh, that's a good shot. The Americans are seizing territory from us. Meanwhile, um, Pepsi's going to push up here with a minesweeper. It's a bit of a worker battle emerging. Two engineers versus three pioneers. Is he going to go in? He's going to go in again. He wants some more. He's having a really good time with this stew. Well, he might have never have stickies at this rate, Bash Lord. If he kills this Brax. He's got to be careful now, though, because... he Well, you can tell if the motor pool's building. Oh, it is building. That's the great thing about uh, coming here as one. You can tell when the buildings are doing something. Motor pool's probably making a T-gun one, would imagine. Oh, Sniper's been caught off. Two... Pioneers coming around the other side here, and a hard retreat necessitated. Nearly killed the weapon support centre. Might be the last sniper for a while. Oh, he's pushed up with all his army. Dexen, you naughty boy, taking out the weapon support centre. He's got all of his support weapons pushed up as well. He's going to have a really good time with this. This, These crazy maps with no base bunkers are... Oh, very odd indeed. And another Stu-42. We're going for Annihilation victory. He's got stickies now. Bash, Lo Bash Nord thinks. Thought it was Bash Lord at first. Don't attack this building. That won't help. Where's that AT gun? Did it really take that long to build? Take out the barracks next maybe. Try and delete this MG. There we go. Getting the experience from it, at least. But meanwhile, I mean, look at the pressure he's done with these pioneers of the flamethrowers. They've been MVPs of his army. Finally, the AT gun's out. Sniper's going to decrew it immediately. Oh, this is savage. Absolutely savage. Yep, good point, Jibber. Oh, I think Co-2 is way more refined. I just prefer the mentalness of Co-1. Because it is absolutely insane. I love it. Just messy. It's like the good old glory days of Co2 ESL era when Co2 was unrefined and silly. Just gotta love a bit of that. Uh... Oh, Pepsi's been done here. Absolutely done. Annihilation victory. Just goes straight for the jugular. Takes advantage of sh shoddy map bunker design. Decrews the AT gun. I think Pepsi's not even playing properly here. He knows he's done. He would have positioned that AT gun a bit further back, maybe, if he was. I don't know. Uh, got two more buildings to go. Target annihilated. This is game one of the best of three. We will be onto a different map later. Pepsi is absolutely effed. Maybe if he had airborne, he could drop in the... Um, what did he go for in the end? Uh, he went for armor. He's effed. If he went for airborne, he could he could power drop the... A uh, Goliath coming. Oh, yeah! Here he is! The little tank that could. He wants in on the action. Hello! Oh, no! <laughs> Oh, and he's retreating off the map. Run away. Get out of there. 
That's it. The Stu's either the most underwhelming unit on the map. Or it just nukes everything. Well said, Demer. Yeah, massive. Oh, look at the fight from Pepsi. He doesn't know when to quit. The mad Frenchman. Nagano, who did not play in this tournament, asking what this nab fest is. He did play in some of those 2v2 cups, though, of course, you may have seen on YouTube recently. Verrier's Ridge Strummingbird, welcome. It's game one of the uh, semi finals. Oh, the pack's been decrewed. Here you go. Go on, MA. Go on, Pepsi. You can do it. But unfortunately, the supply yard will be down soon. Maybe a moral victory. Moral victory can't. Um, he can't spot the sniper. He can't decloak it. And there you go. He's been annihilated. Annihilated. Surely she needs to kill this bunker. There you go. Have we had any other things built? There we go. Play back over. Lovely stuff. Nice. Nice way to end as well. And I hate to say it, but we kind of called it, or I called it as the caster. I pointed out how bad the map design was with not having the bunkers. And that's exactly what we got! <laughs> we just got a map, uh, a base killing race. Because there was no base bunkers. <laughs> it's just silly. You know, make make the players play on a map. Well, the random... It was a random map tournament. So the players were made to play by the randomness of it all. On maps with no base bunker coverage. Just two base bunkers placed stupidly into the centre. Complete gaping hole around the side. And that's what you get! <laughs> You get a 21 minute game. Oh, that was funny. It's always good to be reminded why we do things in a certain way. Now, for Co2, that'll be stuff like that Von Ivan tournament and some other tournaments we've had where they don't use traditional seeding and bracket mechanisms and um, some of the old school rules we've built up over the years. And not just me, the entire community's built up. If they don't get followed, you get a bit of a mess. And, and I like that chaos, to be honest, because I've had years of prudent rule following and, and talking about the the virtues of of uh, seeded tournaments and mechanisms and well-proven logic. And it's good to just pick up that well-proven logic and throw it out the window and then pick up the bath with the baby inside the bath and throw that out the window and then get a wrench and, and, and take the sink off the wall and throw the kitchen sink out the window. Because sometimes it just makes entertaining tournaments, doesn't it? It's fun, basically. And uh, that's what we've got here today. This is going to be fun. It's going to be a really good laugh. And sometimes you just got to have some fun. you got to have some fun. You really have. And uh, that's what we're seeing a little bit um, with some of the tournaments in the community recently. It's been a good laugh. We've had some really fun stuff happening. Uh, what are some of the other good ones we had? We had uh, Gonk's Tournament in Co. 2, which we had just some old, old maps like Lost Glider and Arnhem Checkpoint, which were, went for a reason, because they were imbalanced. We had uh, 2v2 Cups for Co. 1, where firstly we had Brits allowed, and it just showed everybody how powerful Brits are. And then we had Brits banned, which showed how powerful their map is, which was fun. Um, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a wild ride. And both games are at the end of the life cycle, so why not have a bit of fun? Why not mess with the rules a bit, the, the conventions we built up? We know how to run tournaments to get world championship players in a, you know, the fairest conditions possible. And we've kind of done all that now. So in the spirit of that, I mean, if you want to see a brand new cup for Co2 where the players are only allowed one of each unit, they can't have more than one of any unit on the field. Um, I'm doing a cup called the Diversity Cup, which will be at the end of November. And if you want to donate to that, there's an option to do so. I think it'll make Co2 really chaotic and crazy again, just like Co1 still is. So yeah, it could be good. I'm trying to think of a way to make Co2 interesting for myself personally, and that was the thing I came up with. 
Loading into the next map. I will bash Nord. I was just having a break. Thank you for... Uh, I just wanted a bit of a rant for a second, if that was okay. Just like having a good old rant now and again. I actually think OKW do really well in a one-of-everything tournament because they can use the Kubelwagen to cap, Folks Grenadiers uh, into Panzer Fusiliers, so you've got two main lines. You've already got Stern Pioneers, so you've got three main line units. Then you can get Obersoldaten. So it'll be the only faction with... Well, one of the only factions with four decent main lines. So I think that you're wrong to say OKW will fail. I think the weakest will be probably Wehrmacht because Grenadiers plus Assault Grens plus Pio plus MG. Sniper, maybe. I don't know. It just doesn't seem as strong. What would you do, though, Nubius? Why don't you enter that tournament, by the way? Only Jib has entered so far, Nubius. Yeah, rowing hands. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, got rowing hands. Well spotted, Jibber. Back into my old rowing at the moment. Same um, motion and grip as deadlifting toad in a sandwich. Rowing is uh, a thousand deadlifts in a row, but very low weight deadlifts. You're lifting like, what, 30 kilograms of torque, but you're doing it over and over and over and over and over again. So it's basically the same technique, same grip as a deadlift. It has been nice to actually do some exercise for a change, though, because stop doing my coming here as hobby is hard. Uh... <laughs> Rancid cardio. Living longer? Who wants to live longer? Terrible idea. Right, Dexon, 1-0 up. Hello there, and welcome to game three. Do Let me do a... Hang on. I just want to go for a blank and then into it. So for YouTube purposes, it looks professional. Hello there, and welcome to game two of this semi-final. You're looking at Dexen, who is 1-0 up in this series, as shown on the school bar at the bottom there. This is flooded planes, and they are flooded, but they're still definitely planes. It's a flatter map than the one before. And he's up against Le Pep. Monsieur Pepsi, a carbonated beverage of devastating proportions. He is, as you can see, as the Wehrmacht. Surprised we've not seen much Brits and uh, PE this tournament. We, I do know that Pepsi played some PE in the quarterfinals. I was told it was a very good map versus Brits, but I missed it. Match versus Brits, rather. Rifleman to come out first for Dexen. Uh, no brackets, please, because I'm pretty sure there'll be spoilers on the brackets. So we'll look at the brackets after this, because the finals have not been played yet. And I will be casting the finals as the games are released. So after game one, I'll cast game one, etc. Bullat's going to feed me the replays. So big thanks to him. So yeah, no brackets, please. Sorry. Unless you mean this kind. In which case, you can have as many of them as you like. Uh, so, flooded planes. How to play this map? Let's see. Let's see. Pepsi is just going to go for Folks Grenadiers 2 Pio. Standard build order from him. And standard 2 engineer into rifle. And, and this bunker looks like a squad on the mini map, but not this map, which is odd. I just love the tap map from Co1. You could probably just cast in this and you'd be happy. Light speed centrifuges are invented. Then you can fast forward to wherever you want. There you go. I think Co3 will take a very long time to balance. They're launching with four factions, but it'll be very fun. I do plan on running the Master League next year. Um, hopefully. Be a good laugh. And, uh, yeah. Rifleman pushing southwest, just capping this uh, plus five fuel there. What other, we've got a plus ten here, which nobody's gone for, and there's a plus ten in the north, which uh, Dexon's currently going for. First engagement here in the center. They can see each other, unlike um, Co2 with true sight. 
Find those pushed off there. And that's a good amount of fuel going to Dexon's hands. Pepsi has to get on it. And has to stop that happening ASAP. Find his teleport into the house there. And back out. And they're right next to the river. But they're going to re be replaced with Folk's Grenadier. Which will be a nasty surprise for Dexon's army. Cute little jeep is going to be out now. It's a good map for Raid, by the way. Raid is the ability on the armor company, allowing your jeep to capture points. Flooded Plains is a good one for that. Some very deep cutoffs on this map that you can exploit. Ooh, flamethrower there for Dexcent. Just in the nick of time. All of this has to retreat now. Just a big win. Meanwhile, Dexcent's also swallowing up territories in the south. Not the best start for Le Pep. So we've got um, this flamethrower squad here. Low health rifles there. Jeep harassing here. And a third rifle now out. So the build was uh, engineer two rifles, jeep, third rifle. Ooh, the deck. So Pepsi's going for a slower build though. He's got his one allowed sniper on the field. And this one sniper only cup. The way the flamethrowers kind of blur the sight around them. Very good graphics there for a 2005 built game. This game was made in 2005, just think about that. Oh, the sniper's in peril, but here comes the Schwimmwagen to save the day. Schwimmwagens do not get a movement penalty wading through water, so also a very good vehicle for this map. I think that's how they work. I may have made that up, but I don't, I don't think they did there. Just have to wait and see. If that's accurate, I'm pretty sure it is. Just notice how the jeep slowed down there. Watch the Schwimmwagen. Yeah! Oh, it slowed down a bit. Damn. Why am I always wrong? Did it slow down slightly less? <laughs> it's, it's an amphibious light vehicle, though. You'd imagine it's better at going through water. Maybe it can fly. Spread the rumors when Volgans can fly. It shouldn't be slowed. I knew it shouldn't, Dexen. I knew it shouldn't. Thank you, sir. I'm right. Good. Sniper up to three kills for Le Pep. Putting the hurt on Dexen's economy, but his economy really isn't hurting that badly because look at that fuel income. We've got the two plus tens. He's on plus 42 per minute. He's got the supply yard already coming down. He can also build a motor pool in about three seconds' time. This is going very well for Dexon. Where are you from, Dexon? Which country? We're obviously casting you in the final later, so... Oh, yes, babe. Ooh, cringe. But where, where are you from? Okay. Sounds like we're flirting now, because I'm also asking which country you're from. Georgia? So, the birthplace of Stalin. And... Uh, young Russian's favourite holiday destination for 2022. Come to Georgia. You can live. <laughs> no clue. Snipe up to six kills now. Dexon's getting shredded. Territory out of supply. Now we can call in the... Oh my god, that fuel income Dexon's had. He's already got the tank depot. He's already on 36 fuel. Maybe we've seen some M10 crush this game. Let's hope he's a Chad and he's got the M10. I hate Hellcats. It's all about the M10 misfire and crushing. Oh, the little jeep that could. Just doing what he loves, killing Germans. Having some good fun today. Meanwhile, I heard a machine gun. It was the Schwimmwagen's machine gun. Exact same noise profile as the MG42, so very disorientating. And he hits a mine and dies. Does he make it to the water? Yes, he does! Will he sink? No, he won't. It's a shallow grave for Jim. Sniper's up to eight kills now. Dexon should probably think... 
getting rid of it somehow. Oh, throat scurrying is really low. Tickled a little bit on retreat there, but the sniper, or well, the threat thereof, is enough to force him off. So maybe it's going to push to harass. There's plus 16 munitions. Alright then. What are we thinking? I think we've gone past the point where he would have gotten it. I think he's going to go for a Sherman. It's going to be a bloody fast Sherman, that is. The enemy is after our Such good fuel. Sniper down! Oh no. Sniper get down. Sniper's not down. Don't scare me like that. Should have said sniper get down. Yeah, Sherman Croc would be badass, wouldn't it? Sherman Croc or you're banned from the tournament. Ah, oh, just a normal Sherman. Still pretty cool. Sherman, that may hit just after 10 minutes. That's absolutely ridiculous. Losing ground out there. May it hit before 10 minutes? 10? Well, it's definitely going to be a 10-minute Sherman regardless. I just want to see 9-something-something. And it's and beyond the field. That would be pretty cool. It's a very bad map for Vermat, it has to be said. So uh, Pepsi's doing well at this point. We shouldn't be trying to harass two sides of the map at the same time, IMO. Ooh. Oh my god, 9.35 on the field. Crazy. Schwimborgen's getting burnt. Be careful, Mr. Schwimborgen. Get out of there. You're on fire. Go into the water. Get in the water quick. Not into... No, not into the grass, you morons. Our supply lines are being threatened. Sergeant, get an SD on the roof of this can. It's time to shred some crap. Oh, he's got the machine gun as well. Oh dear. Yep. Run away. Heavy cover takes the bullet for them, though. They're lucky in that respect. Again, uh, Pepsi's still trying to harass the fuel. What I mean by the by the way is it's set up on, you know, if he just sets up in this general area here, maybe, and here. I think he'd be a bit better off with uh, Matt. We may do that in time. Oh, big shot and a Faust pack 38. Got a good shot in as well. Sherman's going to try and kite it now. And he's got a really good chance of doing that. Oh, he's got one crew member down. Folks, ground here. Gets another Faust in. Oh, the weapon could be destroyed if he's not careful. the tree instead of the man. Lucky for now. Artillery support is asking on targets. He's going to delete it with artillery. He's been lucky so far. Been very lucky. This one will hit. Oh, look at that spread. Oh. Unfortunate. Sniper with his 13th kill. Shrimp Organ of Pepsi's been out of the battle for a while now. Victory point wise, he's been okay on the victory points. He's just obviously heavily lost the fuel battle. Had a, an extra jeep built for Dexon. Really doesn't want to play with weapon support centers this game. He's going to be hunting, of course, this sniper. Pepsi continuing to harass in the north. He's got first grenadiers running around. Sherman's just eating everybody up at the moment. With that pack down, it's going to be so difficult for Pepsi to push back into this game. Oh, here comes the jeep! Ah, he takes out the, takes it out with the pack, and the sniper survives. So, yep, yeah, nice little manpower pickup at least. But the Sherman's already got nine kills. That's what I call a manpower pickup. Yep, yeah, BK mod will be possibly playing later. I assume he's in the final. I don't know that for certain, but I assume he is. Should be BK versus the winner of this game. 
I don't plan on casting that semi-final, so maybe Demer in chat could confirm whether he beat BK Mod, or it is indeed BK Mod in the final. I just assume that the best Co-1 player of the last five years is in the final. I don't know why, but I just assume. I'm on a coffee low after having a big coffee about an hour ago. Thanks for the raid, Smoko. Welcome, Co-1 fans. So the semi-final um, cast at the moment, Dexon versus Pepsi. The winner likely plays BK in the grand final, which will be happening in about an hour's time. And here he is, disappearing from a dystopian nightmare in the future. It is indeed a second Sherman. Sector being captured. Just got to keep evading them somehow. He has built two packs now. Has he? Oh, that's a Shrimvog. He's just got the one pack Pepsi has. A few battles emerging in the center. It's um, a random map tournament level crook, and the map is Flooded Plains. A House of Vice. One of the few subscribers to my channel. Have we gone for a mortar? We have indeed gone for a mortar. That's an interesting choice by Pepsi. Maybe a misclick? <laughs> Can't think why he'd want it, to be honest. Sherman. Must still be pushing in from the north. First Trinity has hit a mine. They're lucky to only lose one soldier there. I just heard something explode. Oh, the Sherman was crushing these things. There you go, those foot shredders really need to run away now. Pack is looking to get into position. There you go, but the other Sherman could flank it. it needs to be so careful. Oh, we've had a damaged engine on this Sherman. That saves the day. Mines always win games and a main gun destroy critical. Faust to possibly kill a Sherman here. Can he get it off? Pocket rocket. Out of control she goes. There we go, Pepsi. Eliminating some of that fuel discrepancy that's built up so harshly on flooded planes. Casting grand finals of a tournament today. Stun grenade there. Showing we do indeed have Blitzkrieg used yet again. Those assault nades. Really lowering the health of the rifles there. Could have picked them off with the car 98Ks a bit more. A little bit lucky on the retreat. What else have we got going on? Got MP40 folks Grenadies hiding in from us. the marshes. Oh, nice shot from the Sherman gaining. Vector 2 1. They've had an over repair critical as well. It's a pretty unique random ability that sometimes you get an over repair. Yeah, Pepsi's having a really nice spell. We do have a second Sherman on the field. But uh, I tell you what, Pepsi must have gotten some decent fuel. Oh, he's been decloaked over here. Needs to help out. Does he have any help coming? The Shrimborgen can push around the flamethrower squad, perhaps. And the Sniper with 19 kills. Thing is, as well, he needs to open up with this pack. Yes, he gets it. He's got three packs in total. This could be another Sherman down. We do have artillery thundering from the sky above. One more shot to do it. Can he get it? He may need to attack ground here. He may need anything he can. He's going to go for it surely. Good driving by the Tokyo Drift of Sherman there. Too fast, too furious, and escaping behind the house. Meanwhile, the off-map decrews another pack. We've got two decrewed packs there. Should be three in total. Mortar doesn't do enough. Ooh, three decrewed packs. That could be bad. This folks radio squad has to get in there. ASAP. Oh, is it Smoko? I didn't know. That's a shame. It's one of the best features of Co2 competitive attack rounds. They got something right there. 
as you say, I mean, if Co3 is able to blend all the best competitive features of both games, we could have a good game on our hands. But I really think they've gone more for the single player experience than the Co2. Enemy unit down. Killed the shooting squad there with the rifles. Deletes. Not deletes the pack yet, surprisingly. Misses again. You're not wrong with the attack ground being useless. In fact, he may get all three packs back. That is infuriating. Another off map. Takes out the Sherman with the re He should have gotten out there, to be honest. That's a nice spread from the off map. Victory points have swung into Pepsi's favour. I mean, a Wehrmacht win on flooded planes would be really good for the Frenchman. Really surprising, actually. Yeah, I thought as well, Bash, Lord, Bash Nord, yeah. Triple cap for Pepsi for the time being. We've got a completed on-map howitzer in base. And, of course, Blitzkrieg does not have any off-map abilities that can um, delete an on-map howitzer. Um, like Firestorm or V1 Rocket. does have, of course, a Stu-42, which is good at that task, but... Uh, yeah, it's um, it's one of the it's the only one of the three doctrines of Vermat that can't easily delete an on-map howitzer. So if you come up against Blitzkrieg, it's a really good choice to go for. Mortar's gotten four kills so far. Just doing a bit of harassment in general. I can try bash. Yeah, I can try. Um, left side. But we have also seen the assault nades. Uh, oh, sniper! N let any negative cover there? No, he's over light cover. Mine detonates. Meanwhile, we've got MP40 folks from these forcing away riflemen. Deck sent. Oh, that could have been bad there. Little nades on retreat. I just really feel like uh, Pepsi's had a great KD this game. I know he's his Wehrmacht, but even that taken into account it's game two as you can see it's one nil to Dexon right now on the bottom right of the UI forcing away in the north is this sniper still yeah 23 kills pretty astounding stuff from the sniper veteran C2 for the infantry now Oh, what a shot from the on map. How are we obliterating the mortar crew? He could use this in combination with the off map as well. Yeah, we're going to see some five head moves in general, Bash Nord, because of course we are watching the best players of the tournament play today. The final losing four. A victory point. We are losing a victory point. This 1,500 US dollar tournament. Good point, Smoko. They do indeed keep them relevant. Enemy unit. Veteran C3 will help as well. Give them a little bit more fighting power. Sherman can see through that Veteran C. Need to check out this engagement. Virtual Grenadiers could be obliterated. Back in the center. We've got off map taking out the pack. And. Excellent. Possibly taking out a Foch Nadir squad here. Doesn't want to retreat through the artillery. The sniper has to retreat through it, as do the Foch Nadirs now. And they're lucky not to hit an errant shell there. Foch Nadirs somehow escape. Don't know what happened down there to make them escape. Will we finally see... I think Pepsi's going to be going for the Tiger, surely. He must have a lot of manpower. We're losing ground out there. Oh, he's going to need a lot of... He's got 255. Uh, I think he needs five command points for a Tiger. Something like that. Yeah, 
Yeah, Manpower Blitz would be good, Bash Nord. What would you do with Manpower Blitz? So what units would you build? Just constant proliferation of the artillery. He's got five kills on that thing now. How much fuel he's got? 180 fuel, 460 manpower. 186 munitions. He's floating quite a bit, to be honest. New pack fresh on the field. A little bit of lull in activity for a moment. Whilst we wait for um, Pepsi's next choice. Victory point wise, 269 versus 369. It's clear that uh, Pepsi has a bit of a lead there. Let's check on the veterancy of some of this infantry. We've got one vet, one squad, and the, all the others are vet zero. So not much infantry veterancy, to be honest, for 24 minutes in for the American player. He's been doing most of his killing with Shermans, probably explains it. The enemy is after our victory point. I think Manpower Blitz works best with Knight's Crossholders, to be honest. I like Knight's Crossholders and Manpower Blitz because it kind of makes up for the fact they cost a million manpower each when they die. And you've got all this manpower floating around. Oh, Pain is very low and destroyed there by the Browning Automatics. This sniper's up to 30 kills now. Causing all kinds of problems. But to be fair to Pepsi, he's been able to slowly push Dexon off the field. Really capture vast swathes of territory. Where's this artillery? It's there! And the sniper's no longer there. He used off he used on map artillery to kill the sniper there. Something in my uh, spider senses was tingling. And I actually caught a sniper death on screen, everybody. I used my game sense after 11 years of casting experience to catch that sniper death and it's the only one I've ever caught. So can I have some big applause in chat please everybody. I need some claps and some applause because I actually used my brain to catch a sniper dying. So uh, just, just you know, make a note of the date if we can. Resident sleeper hair blouse, uh, that's not very nice. It's the 23rd of October 2022. It's half past three in the afternoon. I caught it. I caught it. There we go. Thanks, guys. Oh, it's a big moment. Big moment. Thanks for the clap. I often don't say thanks for the clap. Usually I have to take penicillin. That's two now for the Sherman. 26 kills and counting. And we're just relying on packs, but they're not really in position at the moment. Three of them in a triangle. The howitzer uh, only has six kills, surprisingly. I thought it would have more than that. I swear I've seen it kill more than that. Right, back in base. Still no tier four or even tier three. He's definitely waiting for the tiger, it would seem. It's just support weapons into Tiger. You know, good luck, have fun. We are losing a munition. That shell got swallowed up. I don't know if you saw that. It just went underneath the map. Got experience for it though, so it's okay. Or he bounced off the weapon or something. Oh, bullseye! Oh, there we go. It hit the camera. Lovely. That tree hit the camera. Vet 3 folk strategy is holding the line to an extent for um, Pepsi here. No more resident sleepers, uh, Basilus. Or you're going to get timed out for resident sleepering. Then you can have a really good sleep. Look, this is just artillery spam at this point, and it's really working. 
He's used the assault grenades, yes. Ah, he got a kill on the engineers, the, the grenades. Again, a pack is absolutely deleted. Oh, that's so dangerous. He should have gone forward, in my opinion. Oh, man. Are we close to the tiger yet? Come on, Pep. He's got, he needs five command points. Oh, he's so far away. Victory point wise, they've um, he's still got a lead on victory points somehow. Do you know what uh, Dexan needs to do? IMO. Oh, he's getting. An, is he? What's he getting? He's getting both upgrades on his rifleman. That's where his fuels just disappeared to. I was saying, I was going to say get another tank, but maybe he knows more than me. If he kept all of his tanks alive, I think he would have won this right now because he could have steamrolled or steamrolled him. Also, in hindsight, maybe the Kalia, sorry, the Kalia, the Firefly, would have been a good idea Grenade because he's up against uh, Vet Three infantry. As it is, his infantry war has been pretty shocking. He's got this one dude here uh, who's on Vetra C One, and all the others are Vetra C Zero. So if he were to lose this game, I would blame that, to be honest, losing the infantry dynamics of the battle. And, of course, the Sherman dying early on. Thanks for the raid, Dog Eels. Welcome, everybody. It's a random map cup, $1,500 Co-1 tournament brought to you by a player called Medicus. And we're watching uh, Pepsi from France versus Dexen of Georgia. But not the American states. Yeah, Crocodile, not Firefly. You know what I meant. Sorry, guys. Brain's a bit tired. I'm on a coffee low. Composition B is in. Troops can now make sticky bombs. There are a lot of Sherman variants. Victory point wise, notice that Pepsi's been able to cap two yet again. He may have lost the fuel economy battle this game, but he did a Oh, that's a big hit! Ow! My face! Please refrain from hitting my face! This howitzer's has really ratcheted up the kills now. 12 kills and one vehicle destroy. Not bad. Where's the big boy? Surely we're getting to five command points now, but you do not get experience in Co. 1 for dying. One of the best changes, worst changes of Co. 2 is you get experience for 25% damage received. Co. 1 doesn't have any of that. You actually have to kill people to get experience, and that's how it should be, IMO. But that's because... Uh, I think it's better to reward aggressive play than to reward failure. Here, you failed. Have 25% economy because you failed. That's just stupid. It's always been stupid. But, in guess what, guys? In code 2 beta and release, it was 50%. That's right. Experience for everybody. 50% received and given damage counted towards experience. So you could literally die your way to victory. Ooh, where's he up to now on that wheel? He's climbing the manpower train. Needs, I think, 800 for a tiger. He's going to try and delete the pack with the on-map howitzer there. Meanwhile, Bars in the south. Fine out with the Vet 3 folks. There he is. Look at that wheel, guys. He's getting closer. Needs to actually kill. That's why he's fighting here. He's actually battling. Just trying to kill some, je um, some bloody... Yankees. That's what the Germans call them, Yankees. Come on! One more! And he's got it! Here we go, 64! Tons of quantified menacing steel from the crop stall near you. Oh, it's there, everybody. And here he comes. Can you hear the rumble of thunder? There he is. There's the big boy. Get out there and wreck some havoc, big fella. You're already veteran C2. He's already been teching up in anticipation of the tiger. It's going to rumble into these flooded plains and fill them full of the bloody remains of many an American squad. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure it probably does spanky. I just wish it didn't. Co one did it right, IMO, in that respect. And we're going. By the way, we're going back to Dexen being blue in this game. 
Um, because that's how we were for most of the game. Now we've got the Tiger on the field. Tiger's first operation is to get artillery in the face, just like in the Battle of Kursk. Tanks don't do that well against artillery in real life. Who would have thought? Ah, there go the pioneers. Good job, Mr. Tiger. You definitely didn't defend anybody there. Sorry for the ads, Enemy not my fault. Down. But it was definitely uh, Dexon's fault that that Folks Radio squad just died. Tiger yet to get a kill. We've got Shermans coming in on the flank. Maybe going to take a little shot on the rear armor, but Pepsi maneuvers the Tiger to face the right way, and the Sherman nopes the hell out of there. You cannot blame him. That is a very big 80mm cannon. I can't control the ads. It's Twitch. Literally. Don't blame me. Just hope that YouTube improves as a platform or people begin to watch stuff on YouTube. One thing I notice is if I stream to YouTube and then upload it afterwards to YouTube or release it to YouTube, I don't get as many views. I think I get like one penny every ten ads or something, so yeah. Getting paid in loose terms. Oh, he's a good looking lad, isn't he? I wish you could use the smoke dischargers. I'd make it cooler, IMO. Right, let's go and ask ourselves how is Dexon going to deal with the big cat in the room? He's going to build an AT gun. Good choice. He's got 250... He's going to use more artillery, seemingly. Where's that going to land? It was in the south. I just couldn't see the smoke. Ah, it was exactly where I positioned my camera. I just couldn't see it. Must be blind. Observation point has just been completed on the plus 26 munitions. That's a lot of muni income now. He's also got this plus 5 and this plus 16 down here. So that's going to be an elacious income of muni. Indeed, he's on plus 69. So uh, every two minutes he can pretty much use the howitzer shoot. Tiger's climbed to six kills now. He's veteran C3, giving him more health if he didn't need enough already. Anybody know the bonuses for a Tiger in Company Heroes 1? Anybody want to Google it for me and report to chat? It'd be a very useful service you would offer us all. We'd all like to know how the board spectrum for Wehrmacht works on a Tiger. There's the inspired assault. They're inspired and they're assaulting. And the riflemen are also inspired to run away. We have a secured sector under attack. Victory point pressure has gone into the Americans' hands. The Wehrmacht are suffering a little bit now, dropping to 190. 180. Meanwhile, here we go. We've got Fudge Grenadies going north to Our take it up there. AT gun and Sherman with the unupgraded turret. Just the 75 mil for now. One thing it could have done versus the Tigers, maybe go 76 and try and get around the backside of it, but not sure that would help. Probably best just to crack on with the AT guns. Thanks, uh, Bash Lord. Receive damage decrease, so that's basically... Yeah, health, I guess, in effect. Maximum health increased. Maximum Enemy penetration decreased. So basically, it's ultra survivable. Just unlike the entirety of Pepsi's army right now, the Tiger has watched lots of support weapons bite the dust to artillery. He's getting eaten alive by the stuff. It's his fault for daring to go Blitzstreet, but I tell you what, the first Grenadiers are daring to... Faust that panzer. With the pocket rocket there. Taking out the Sherman. Meanwhile, Tiger eats a big shot through the rear. Don't Google that. At work, at least. And there's another AT gun pounding on the frontal mantlet. He needs to be careful. He's got no infantry support. The barred rifles are pushing forward. Don't forget they have sticky bombs. So could cause, could cause an issue. 
Tiger's backed up and he's not backing up any further. Needs to keep going in my opinion. It's a lot of health but won't matter if he keeps backing his ass up there. No negative cover. Riflemen are free to advance but the French Grenadiers now have them in their sights. AT guns are in position. I think I've got somebody knocking on the door. Hang on. Was an audio hallucination, my lord. Right. I see guns backing up. The rifleman is going to buy them time. Yeah, stalling for the tiger. Not going Stugs and or Pumas or Tier Three at all. I mean, Pumas are great on this map. There's loads of shot blockers and, and stuff. And he was up against Browning automatic rifles. Would have been a good shout. Really counteracts the. Uh, how it's a usage. I mean, don't get me wrong, he may not have fully lost yet, but it definitely looks like he has. Getting more Shermans now. By the way, the infantry veterancy situation. We've got two veterancy rifles for that better accuracy and better received accuracy. Yeah, exactly. If you think about all that he spent on the fuel, yeah, from the. Exactly, Nico, exactly. I think Pumas are famous for flooded planes. When I used to have to play this match in auto match, when the game was quite new, or um, my housemate did actually when I was at university, he was always going Pumas on flooded planes. But 2008, 2009 era, that is. Enemy Watching my mate play auto match this, now. I was absolutely encapsulated by it. Not encapsulated. I thought it was really cool anyway. Stu's really not going to help, I don't think. Tiger's not been bothered to be repaired at this point. Enemy Enemy possible flank down. coming in soon. Howitzers have really done a number on him. Oh, he's got two now! You naughty boy, he's got two firing in unison on this defensive position. Oh dear, oh dear. He's absolutely turned this into the Battle of the Somme. More like flooded remains now. That's ah, no fuel in Co. One Lush Meadow. It's only manpower, but he spent a lot on the veterancy for the tiger. The economy works in an entirely different fashion in this game. It's balanced, but only for balance for US versus Wehrmacht, and it's really difficult to get your head around exactly how it works. The enemy is down to 50 points. Very interesting uh, dynamics in Co. One. Definitely the decision making of Pepsi did not help in this game. Some could say that the positioning of the actual enemy unit, how he played the map, allowing his opponents to have both high fuels, was not good either. And the long wait for Tiger did not seem to be a prosperous one in the end. Oh no, we've got a damaged engine critical. Thanks to these AT guns. Oh D, he was trying to get around the rear of that Sherman, but. He just ran into the AT guns and he's in a sitting duck out there. We're going to have instant veterancy three. He's bounced a few shots for now thanks to the 5% critical. Instant veterancy three. He bounces two more. Here we go. There you go. Instant veterancy two actually. Okay. GG Pepsi says. And we have our finalist. Dexon is going through to the grand final. Against BK Mod Test, which will be cast for you in about 40 minutes' time, I imagine, something like that. Enemy unit down. It was an entertaining game whilst it lasted, though, that one, especially in the early game, until Pepsi made some strategic decisions that did not go very well. Um, Herr Basilus, uh, Wehrmacht won game one, mate. So, 
STFU, yeah? Don't make it all about balance whinging, please, in this, um, this stream, if you can. So, yeah, we're 2-0 two, two victory for Dexen. Ready to fight, sir. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we can make a list of all the good things Co. 2 does and all the good things Co. 1 does. And strat points for Co. 2 were much worse than Co. 1 because they don't allow the map maker to make maps that are interesting because everything gives resources. But to be honest, that map we watched before was a terrible map, um, Verrier's Ridge, because it had safe fuels, too many safe fuels. This map's much better. Classic map this is. This is the the how map making should work, because um, you've got two cutoffs and two home points, so you get a little bit of native income, two cutoffs, the rest of it, and then the rest of it's just standard company hero stuff. Got um, yeah, the resources points are mirrored. You either go for the high resources up here or the high resources down here. Probably too much resources, but what I'm saying though, Nico, is this bit. That's what I mean. Basically, the rest of it's a little bit a lot, isn't it, to be fair? The AT ammo is too much, definitely. But that's but what you're forgetting, though, Nagano, is the fact that there's a lot of munitions means you can spam mines. And spamming mines makes flooded planes way better to play on because it's way more tense and interesting when there's mines used a lot more. Because you have to use the minesweepers to progress. And what and what the what Pepsi didn't do this game was spam enough mines because then he could protect his flanks. From the you know the M8 and the Shermans and stuff. It, is it though? Because I swear to God, the whole point of it is there's all these roads and stuff. I don't know where Co. One's just disappeared to. Oh, that's the wrong thing. That's why. Um, that's grass. Ah, uh, you know, there's loads of obvious place to put mine. So here, here, here. One, two. There or maybe there actually because. Things would travel there. There. Uh, this is too open, I would agree. There's no obvious mine places there. Maybe here and here. I'm, I'm speaking from the Western perspective as their map, by the way. Then obviously there, or there. And then obviously there. 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 So, you know, if, if we do a chain of mines going from the north. One. Two. Three. Uh, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, there are a lot of m nine spaces needed. Uh, nine, ten. Okay, there are a lot. I agree. Eleven. So you have to plant eleven <laughs> in order to cut the entire map off. But that's the whole point, though. It's got crap tons of munitions. You know what I mean? You've got plus sixteen, plus tens. Um, you know, so... It, that's why Flooded Plains isn't the worst map ever made. It's not terrible. It's got some interesting dynamics. And the whole point is you meant to... It's got a lot of munitions, so you use a lot of mines. I could have coached Pepsi to win. I would have said, mine every corner. Don't go Blitzkrieg. And what would you go instead? Go defensive only. <laughs> uh, Sem was good, but I'm just bored of it, to be honest, Dexen. Too many games have been played on Sem War over the years. Too many tournaments, too many finals. And we're all a bit sick of it now. Shh, don't ever say... You're not allowed to say wreck trains on my stream. Oh, replace flooded plane with for wreck train. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, funnily enough, if the server gets resetted, uh, wrecked train or bow lowlands get swapped for flooded planes. Um, so the patch before... 2.601 or 0 or whatever. Uh, flooded Plains is in the pool and Wreck Train or Bow Lowlands isn't. So that's how it should be, IMO. They had it right in 2011. Yeah, those guys should go and play because we need some replays. We're going to cast each game as they come out today.
Oh, third place playoff. Okay. Well, I've only got enough juice to cast the final, I'm afraid. But I hope you have a really good game. Sorry about not, not casting your series. Uh, you did send it, Bullat, but um, I'm, as I say, I'm, I'm a hype caster, so it takes me a lot of energy to cast. So I may revisit that for an auto for um, after these tournaments are finished. I may go back and do that one genuinely because I think it's make a really good video. Um, because as you say, it's P versus Brits, and I love P versus Brits. But uh, yeah. All right, guys, let's go and wait for these finals to be played. I'm going to go to a wait screen for about I don't know. 40 minutes or something and uh, yeah I'm sure it'll be played in good time I think they're about to start aren't they in five minutes time so yeah we'll have a bit of a break and we'll wait for them to come on change the title of the stream to say clearly grand final as well so let's do uh, I don't know 33 minutes Change the stream name. Is it a best of five or a best of three next? I mean, no. 